everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to revisit a dyeing experiment that seemed to work really well, but I'm not just sure how well it worked. And we are going to stencil onto a soft blank and then dip dye it to, to set the color. In this basin, I have it about a little over half full of just tap water and I added two tablespoons of white vinegar. And now I'm gonna pre-soak a Stroll double-stranded sock blank in this mixture. Stroll is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, and it has two 50 gram balls of yarn wound together, knit together. So that way when it's unraveled and transformed into something else, we have two matched. 50 gram balls of yarn and it doesn't matter what kind of random pattern we do on the blank you could still get a sibling pair of socks if that's what you want to make out of it. I'm going to go ahead and pre-soak this for at least 30 minutes and then we are going to stencil onto the blank using some guar gum mixtures I made earlier today. I like to mix up my guar gum at a ratio of one half teaspoon of guar gum in one cup of water. And I do this in my magic bullet because that is way easier to dissolve the powder really quickly versus uh, trying to do it by hand. It's, that's a really slow process. Since I don't have a dedicated dyeing magic bullet, I always make a large stock of guar gum uh, in advance of transitioning my kitchen from a food kitchen to a dyeing kitchen. And the container that I use for this guar gum then becomes a dedicated dye container. I hope that makes sense. But this ratio is one that is nice and thick and you can dilute either with liquid dyes or add a little bit of water as needed. In general, guar gum mixtures don't last for long periods of time. Eventually they will spoil. So I recommend that you plan to use it close to when you make it, but saving it for a week or so hasn't been an issue for me. As for the colors we are gonna use today, I'm using some dyes that I mixed up also in part of a previous video. I added a little bit of electric violet, emerald green, deep magenta, and then finally for a deeper blue, it was a mixture of extreme blue with a little bit of fluorescent fuchsia in there. Now in general, emerald green is a color that tends to spread out a lot. And the same goes for fluorescent fuchsia. That pigment doesn't tend to strike very fast. So if when we dip dye this, we end up seeing bleeding, those are the two pigments that I expect to cause an issue. However, we have so little fluorescent fuchsia ultimately mixed in, I think we'll see more of an issue from those greens spreading out. I added a little bit of a 1% stock solution to each of the containers. I wasn't measuring the volume, but I added enough to get a consistency of the guar gum that I liked to use. These are the colors that I have left. I've got a lot of the green. And you can see that the thickness is good. You know it's good when you dip a spoon or something in and you can see the product really coats it. That is a good thickness to have it not bleed from where you have placed it. I don't have very much of the blue or the purple left. So I'm gonna add some more of the guar gum. And then I'm coming in and adding a little bit more of our 1% stock solutions, just so that way we have more of these colors. Um, I do think a combination of just green and pink would be really, really pretty, but I want, I don't know, to have little bits of all these colors slightly randomly throughout. But of course, the stenciling is not the main part of our video, it's gonna be that dip dyeing. And so you should really go check out the previous episode of Dye Pot Weekly where I did a mermaid inspired colorway using these same colors, stenciling with the blank, to see more of the long process of stenciling. We're gonna set up the dye bath that we'll use for dip dyeing because I'm gonna want this to be hot before we go and paint onto the blanks because we could leave the dye on the blanks and let it sit at room temperature for 20 minutes while this heats up, but that adds a slightly different variable to our equation. So in this pot, I have 16 cups of water. I added two tablespoons of white vinegar and we're gonna go heat it up. Since I'm gonna be dip dyeing this blank, I didn't bother rolling out any plastic wrap onto my work surface. I accidentally scratched a little hole on the shower curtain 
in the past, and so this one is near the end of its life. Of course, I do double it over uh, to protect my countertop, uh, so we have two layers of protection here, but I didn't mind if I end up staining the countertop at all. Now, while stenciling with these colors, I'm applying the dye with foam brushes and then rinsing off the stencil in between, uh, I guess, adding the colors. And when I put it back on the blank, I'm patting it dry with a paper towel to remove some of that water that is left on the stencil from rinsing it off. I did observe in the other stenciling blank video that I filmed today that if I took a paper towel and put it on top of the dyed section, I didn't see a ton of pigment come up from it. There might have been one tiny dot of pink or a little dot of green, but it does seem that a lot of the dye that we're adding either is striking to our yarn, even at room temperature, or just the guargum is holding it in place. So my hypothesis is that we might see a little bit of green spread but otherwise, I think that this is gonna work pretty well. And the really good thing about this is that if things are staying in place, it means that maybe we won't need to use plastic wrap when we're stenciling blanks like this. Because if the colors are gonna stay put from where we put them, then it might mean we can scrunch it a little bit to steam set without getting transfer. So that is something that we will likely try next as a follow-up to today's project. But for now, we're gonna dip dye and see, does our backdrop still feel white? Or do we see some pastel green? Do we see some bleed that we're capturing? I'm very curious. But anyway, we're done stenciling our blank and we'll just look at it really quickly before we go and dip dye. Okay, I have finished painting on the blank. Now, there are a few little oopsies. Um, there's some random pink little specks over there. And then there was the time that the tongue depressor stir stick uh, fell on. Uh, so, I mean, it is what it is that exists there. But the nice thing is that the mistake will be in both skeins. But the stencil overall worked pretty well. There's some of those little shapes that have lost their definition a bit, but you can feel that lattice. Who I'm debating if I should try bringing it to the edge. And you know what? I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna just do it. I know this means a little bit more work for me, but this is a stencil that is really easy to spread out. And yes, the other side won't be even across the edge, but this is gonna bring a little bit more color to the edges. And that one oops with the depressor falling on it, it's gonna make that a little bit a little bit less obvious and so it's gonna make me feel a little better oh man i am so glad i decided to do this uh, i think that there is a lot more cohesion to our blank overall and yeah i'm i'm so excited i mean the edges are not perfectly even but this makes that mistake and i think there was one other potential mistake it makes them stand out a little bit less. Even if um, over here I may have been a little vigorous, uh, some of these just might have been a little bit um, enthusiastic, but I think we're ready to dip dye. We're ready to start dip dyeing. And I will admit I'm very curious, and yes, I will show you as I lift this up, there is some dye left on the counter. But now let's come in and we're gonna start dip dyeing this. And I'm slowly going in and out. And I can say immediately, I am seeing some spread and some bleeding from some of those green colors. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera, if you can see, but yes, I'm definitely seeing some spread from our greens. Let me see, because I'm trying to not like touch it to itself. Too much, it is gonna curl up as we go, but I'm not getting a lot of dye on my fingertips and so yes yeah, see like maybe down there how that green is just spreading a bit and this I guess goes along with what we know about emerald green um, it is a color that takes longer to strike overall and so it is not that 
surprising that those pigments are spreading out. Okay, I'm gonna put the rest in because it's getting hard to raise and lower. I am going to shimmy it a little bit, but the good news is that we're still seeing most of this design intact, even with that green spreading out. So yeah, the bulk of our green has kind of stayed put. I don't know how much of this has to do with the guar gum um, versus anything else. Goodness, but I'm gonna go ahead and heat this for 30 minutes. We'll come back, we'll check in, we'll see what kinds of transfer we see. I do see like some globs come up. I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera. And I don't know if this little blue dot if that is a glob of guar gum or a little bit of fiber. So that I don't know. <laughs> but, man, I, I am so excited. I am gonna move this again because it's possible. Yeah, so see right there in this one, you can see some of that green spread around that line. But the line itself is showing up and if we see I'm also curious to see if we see evidence of some stamping. So like when this rolled up, will we see some of these lines where we weren't supposed to? That I don't know either. Oh, I'm so excited to remove this. But anyway, we'll be back in 30 minutes. And this is what the countertop looks like right now. Um, we do have some dye on here, but most of it is in the blank. Now, if I were to come and immediately um, put another blank on here, we would get color transfer. Um, but you can see just from this paper towel, it's not that much pigment there, but in any given spot on here, it could be a little bit more concentrated and so it could be visible on the blank. And so in general, I probably recommend putting down plastic wrap. You might notice that these days, sometimes when I'm doing a countertop technique, I still do it in a catering steam pan, which isn't big enough for a project like today's. But one of the reasons why I do that is so that way if there's anything left on the counter, we don't get transfer onto whatever I'm working on. But anyway, I'll be back and we'll check in on the blank once the timer goes off. There is no doubt, none whatsoever, that we have a pastel base here um, and yeah there's different amounts of the green bleed throughout the whole thing I wonder if it's gonna feel like bleeding or if it's gonna feel more like I dyed uh, the base first I don't know yet um, all I can say is that I'm gonna turn off the heat and I'm gonna add two more tablespoons of white vinegar I'm gonna go ahead and let this blank cool off here for a little while. And then once things are cool, we can go wash it. There's no dye left in there, but I figure there's no issue just letting it cool there. Quick note from editing, Rebecca. Uh, I cannot find the clip where I washed this sock blank. Uh, I was just trying to sort through all the files and I filmed three different sock blank videos at the same time. And sometimes then clips get mixed up and accidentally sorted with one video instead of another. But even going through the SD card, I couldn't find it. Now, what I can say is that we didn't have any bleeding. And I can say this with confidence because the one color that bled a little bit when we dip dyed it in the pot was the green. And I used that green mixture for another blank. Uh, that is another video probably coming out sometime after this one. And there was no bleeding when washing the blanks there. And so therefore, I am confident that there was no bleeding. I washed the blank a little more times than usual because you wanna make sure that the guar gum is all removed uh, before hanging it up to dry. But yeah, once I was done washing it, I put it through the spin dryer, hung it up to dry, and now let's see the final blank. I am really impressed with this sock blank, with the way that the pattern turned out. And Goodness, I know you need to use a different thickener when you're using fiber reactive dyes and cotton because I think, I don't remember which one you're supposed to use. Uh, fiber reactive dyes react with one type of thickener. So I, I don't remember off the top of my head, uh, but it would, how fun would it be to do this kind of pattern on like a tote bag or something? 
uh, especially if you could prevent those dyes from spreading out. I don't know, something about this, it makes me think ties, it makes me think just like fancy pattern, and I really, really like that. The color placement throughout the blank is really random. Uh, I tried to vary up the placement of the four colors that we were using, the green four? Yeah, the green, pink, purple, and blue. Uh, but there are possible that there's areas and sections that have more pink versus some of the other colors and vice versa. I don't think that this is a blank that would have some kind of gradient or massive asymmetry to it. I think that it'll have some a lot of really fun reverse speckling likely. Um, let's, let's actually look into that. Okay, if I take a section and I pull it, so you can see the sections in between. You can see some color variation there in this green section. There's gonna be some lighter specks. I think it's a little hard to see on camera. I'm unclear. Yeah, there'll be some modeling in this green spread as well. It's going to be very, very subtle. Aha, here in this pink section, when I spread the yarn apart, you can see those little white specks. Those are those reverse speckles I was talking about. Another way you can sometimes tell if you're gonna get reverse speckling is by flipping the blank over and looking at the wrong side. And here you can see that the pattern is patchier. And so that means that the dye didn't go all the way through the fabric, and therefore you know that the pink section is gonna be interrupted with some of the base color. Whether that's gonna be white or maybe a pastel green, it's hard to say unless you unravel it. And I'm not planning on unraveling this blank in our video today. And the reason for that is I like to give customers the chance to decide whether they would like to unravel the blank themselves or if they want me to unravel it for them. And so on every listing in the Kenneth's Creations Etsy shop, when you purchase a blank, if it has not yet been unraveled, <laughs> you can have, you have the opportunity to ask me to unravel it for you. It'll add a couple days of processing time because once I unravel the blank, I then will soak the blank for a little bit to help relax the crimp because the yarn is a bit zigzaggy because of the way that it's in the knit stitches that are being unraveled. Now, I've talked a lot about the blank at this point, but the technique. We applied the dyes to our blank and there was acid in the blank before we added the dyes and things struck pretty well to where I placed them. Another way we could do this kind of experiment is if we did not have acid in the blank, then it's possible we would see more color spreading out. But I think that really the only color that really spread was that green that we used. And even with the, the spreading, we still have a lot of it that stayed. There was just a small amount that spread and gave us this nice minty background color all over. The blank. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm also very happy that I decided to include a color that I thought might bleed uh, because I think it's very possible that the black dye did not bleed in the previous video. And so what does this really mean? The fact that there's little transfer, maybe if I fold up the blank, might mean that there are some cases where I don't need to wrap the blanks in plastic wrap when I want to go steam them. But I'm still a little bit hesitant <laughs> to try that. It does mean that I could try some kind of small silicone piece or something to kind of fold the blank on itself, maybe to keep parts from touching, I'm not entirely sure how well that would work because it would be unfortunate to go through all the effort of stenciling a blank to then accidentally end up with color transfer once you go and try to set that color. But as an experiment, I'm very, very happy that I did this and with the results that we got today. Thank you so much for watching.